To put it simply, Lucifer is my favorite comic to TV adaptation ever. I mean hell, pun intended. I even managed to sneak the show into my Explaining Satanism video. So that should at least show you my interest in it. Anyway, it has amazing characters, well-paced drama, and somehow manages to be both a show about the supernatural and a detective show at the same time. The funniest part is I really don't like detective shows. The last one I really enjoyed being Criminal Minds and Psych. Not to mention, the main character is the devil, and he is portrayed in a good light. Like, what? So very few shows, movies, literature, or other types of media portray the devil in a positive light, at least from what I've read or seen. Anyway, without seeming like a total fanboy, the premiere for season 3 of the show aired just this past week, and it was amazing. However, I'm not here to give a review, I'm just here to pose a solution to a very early question the show left us with. Who is the Sinner Man? The name was dropped around the last 10 minutes of the episode, and it is revealed, spoiler alert, that the Sinner Man was the one who knocked out Lucifer at the end of season 2. Since then, I've been going insane trying to figure out who this Sinner Man is. And I think I got an idea. Also, I know this is a horror channel, and the show Lucifer isn't technically a horror show, but hey, it deals with the supernatural, has murder in it, and people are scared of the devil. So why not? Alright, to begin, here's what we know so far about the Sinner Man, as of episode 1. So again, spoiler alert. The Sinner Man is a new character added to the Lucifer TV show Mythos. The character is shrouded in mystery. However, he is believed to be a depraved criminal mastermind, one who Lucifer, and thus the audience, suspect as the one who kidnapped him. Not much is known about the Sinner Man's personality, but he is believed to be morally corrupt, as evidenced by the poor guy he kills at the end of the episode, and his name alone strikes fear amongst those who hear it, which paints him as someone who is not to be trifled with. Moreover, the Sinner Man seems to be a strong entity on his own, as he is able to knock out Lucifer, at least that's if he's the one who did it. In the end, that's all we actually know about the Sinner Man. Given this, you would normally assume that there is not much evidence to go off of to form a solid theory about who the Sinner Man actually is. But I beg to differ. The evidence doesn't necessarily lie in the first episode itself, but rather outside, mainly from the interviews and the comics of which the show is based on. The first theory is that the Sinner Man is actually Lucifer, or a version of him I should say. It sounds insane, yes. But it is a DC show, albeit one of the more tamed ones in comparison to that of the Arrowverse. Anyway, I specifically think that the Sinner Man is Lucifer's Duenum. What is that? In short, Lucifer's Duenum is Lucifer's negative, whose touch would cancel out both of them. This entity was created by Gygus from Greek mythology and his older brother, Garamus, who led an attack on the Silver City, otherwise known as Heaven. There were several clues given out by the show writers of Lucifer to suggest that the big bad of the season, the Sinner Man, may actually be Lucifer's Duenum. To quote an interview with TV Guide, writer Joe Henderson said, We look at him, the Sinner Man, like a bizarre reflection of Lucifer. We learn in an upcoming episode that he also gives out favors, but his are a little bit more nefarious. When this guy gives out favors, you're really dreading the payment that you'll have to give. So, it's sort of the devil facing a dark reflection of himself. So, if you noticed, the Sinner Man and the Duenum already share some similarities. Both are essentially dark reflections of Lucifer, and both act as the antithesis of what Lucifer is. Moreover, the Duenum in the comics was created to stop Lucifer. And if you remember correctly, the Duenum cancels out Lucifer, which means Lucifer can't use his abilities, like invulnerability slash immortality also explaining how the Sinner Man was able to knock out Lucifer at the end of Season 2. Another important quote from the show writers is when they say in the same interview that Sinner Man has a motivation in taking Lucifer into the desert that's other than his wings. He has this specific motivation that we will reveal to you throughout the entire season. He has a personal reason. Moreover, as a friend of mine put it, the Duenum is essentially an internet troll. He hates Lucifer because Lucifer is something he is not. Whole. Could this be the reason why the Sinner Man is torturing Lucifer by giving him his wings back? Is it because he despises Lucifer because he is something he is not? Is this the personal reason? Moving forward to the second theory, I also believe, if the first theory is not correct, that the Sinner Man is someone who Lucifer refused to help in their time of need. In this theory, I am suggesting that someone was told by God in their time of need to go to Lucifer and ask for help. When this person, who I am assuming is the Sinner Man, went to Lucifer for help, Lucifer initially agreed. 
However, upon hearing word that Lucifer's father, God, sent the man, Lucifer refused to help. The man probably pleaded with Lucifer for his help, but Lucifer probably refused, turning the man away despite his pleading. Lucifer only doing so out of his pride and his constant need to be defiant and uncontrolled by another person or entity. This could also be the personal connection the show writers were talking about. The evidence for this theory lies in an older episode. Let's recall all the way back to season 1 of the show, specifically episode 6. If you're like me, you wondered why the name Sinnerman sounded so familiar when the name was dropped. Well, it's because it wasn't the first time the name was mentioned. In fact, the name was mentioned in episode 6 of season 1. One of the shots shows Lucifer singing a song titled Sinnerman. And it is this song that holds another clue to the theory that the Sinnerman was at first just someone who needed help. The evidence lies in the lyrics. Oh Sinnerman, where are you gonna run to? Sinnerman, where are you gonna run to? Where are you gonna run to? So I run to the Lord, please hide me Lord, don't you see me praying? Don't you see me down here praying? But the Lord said, go to the devil. The Lord said, go to the devil. He said, go to the devil. So I ran to the devil. He was waiting, I ran to the devil. He was waiting, ran to the devil. All on that day, I cried, power. To recap, the sinner man did something bad and turned to the Lord for help. The Lord couldn't help him, so he sent him to the devil. The devil waited, but it seems like ultimately he refused to help. As their sinner man, the singer in the song, proceeds to say that they cried, which could mean they felt defeated because they didn't know what to do. This kind of betrayal from both God and the devil could have led this poor soul to a route of pure evil, becoming a crime boss and adopting the name The Sinner Man. I know the theories sound outlandish and somewhat confusing, but I honestly believe that one or the other of the theories is true. If the first is true, then the show writers would be doing something amazing by using more inspiration from the comics. And if the second theory is true, then that means the writers are amazing for foreshadowing the plot of Season 3 all the way from Season 1. Either way, I'd be happy. Well, that's the end of this insane video. So let me leave you with this little factoid. Did you know, Lucifer is based off the character of the same name from DC's Vertigo Comics, Sandman Volume 2, Issue Number 4, which released in 1989.